In the previous part, we stopped in the paragraph where Mr. Verma would display a very weird behavior. Remember, he would lie down on his bed as though he was dead. And once everyone in the house gathers around him, he would sit up straight suddenly and spit out some betel juice from his mouth. Now this went on very often, so none of the family members paid attention to him except his son. Rakesh. So we will continue. It was Rakesh who brought him his morning tea, not in one of the china cups from which the rest of the family drank, but in the old man's favorite brass tumbler and sat at the edge of his bed, comfortable and relaxed with a string of his pajamas dangling out from under his fine lawn night shirt and discussed or rather read out the morning news to his father. Every morning, Rakesh would diligently bring his father his morning tea, not in any ordinary china cup, but in the favorite brass tumbler of his father. Rakesh would sit at the edge of his father's bed and read him the morning papers. It made no difference to him that his father made no response apart from spitting. Okay, so as he sits, in his father's bed, reading the newspaper to him, his father would not respond to him. But this made no difference to Rakesh. He still loved his father no matter what. It was Rakesh too who, on returning from the clinic in the evening, persuaded the old man to come out of his room as bare and desolate as a cell and take the evening air out in the garden beautifully arranging the pillows and blosters on, on the divan in the corner of the open veranda. So when Rakesh comes back from his clinic in the evening, the first thing he would do is go to his father's room and persuade him to come out to take some fresh air. So he would beautifully arrange the pillows and cushions for him to make him as comfortable as possible and make him sit in the open veranda. On summer nights he saw to it that the servants carried out the old man's bed onto the lawn and himself helped his father down the steps and onto the bed, soothing him and settling him down for a night under the stars. So on summer nights he would order his servants to carry out his father's bed onto the lawn and he himself would help his father walk down the steps so he can enjoy the night under the stars. All this was gratifying for the old man. What was not so gratifying was that he even undertook to supervise his father's diet. Okay, so all that Rakesh was doing for his father was satisfying to the old man. He was very happy. But what was not satisfying to him was that Rakesh would even supervise what his father was eating. One day, when the father was really sick, having ordered his daughter-in-law to make him a dish of suji halwa and eaten it with saucerful of cream, Rakesh marched into the room not with his usual respectful step, but with the confident and rather contemptuous stride of a famous doctor and declared no more halwa for you papa we must be sensible at your age if you must have something sweet vina will cook you a little kheer that's light just a little rice and milk but nothing fried nothing rich we can't have this happening again one day the father felt really sick so he wanted to have some sweet dish called suji halwa. So he ordered his daughter-in-law to make him some. So he ate it with a saucer full of cream. Later that day, Rakesh came to know about it. He was so angry, so he marched into the room of his father and scolded him. Okay, He said, no more halwa for you, Papa. We must be very careful at your age. If you want to have some sweets, 
Vina, Vina is his wife. Okay, Vina will cook you a little kheer, very light one, with little rice and milk. But you cannot have anything fried, nothing rich like cream. So, this is how he reacted to his father eating some sweet dish. This is what Mr. Verma did not like. The old man who had been lying stretched out on his bed, weak and feeble after a day's illness, gave a start at the very sound, the tone of these words. He opened his eyes rather, they fell open with shock, and he stared at his son with disbelief that darkened quickly to reproach. A son who actually refused his father the food he craved? No, it was unheard of. It was incredible. But Rakesh had turned his back to him and was cleaning up the litter of bottles and packets on the medicine, on the medicine shelf, and did not notice while Vina slipped silently out of the room with a little smirk that only the old man saw and hated. Okay, so the old man had been lying sick and weak the whole day. And after getting scolded like that from his loving son, he was shocked. He couldn't believe that this happened to him. He couldn't believe that a son would actually refuse his father the food he longed for. Here he said it was unheard of. It was incredible. But Rakesh paid no attention to him. And he was cleaning the litter. Here, litter is waste. Okay, there are waste bottles of medicine packets everywhere. So he was cleaning that up. And he did not notice Vina showing him a little face of hate to the old man. And the old man was really hurt. Halwa was only the first item to be crossed off the old man's diet. One delicacy after the other went. Everything fried to begin with, then everything sweet, and eventually everything, everything that the old man enjoyed. So, halwa was the first thing to be crossed out from his diet. But very soon, everything fried, and everything sweet, and eventually everything that the old man enjoyed was crossed or removed from his diet. He was not allowed to consume them. The meals that arrived for him on the shining stainless steel tray twice a day were frugal to say the least, dry bread, boiled lentils, boiled vegetables, and if there was a bit of chicken or fish, that was boiled too. So the old man was served twice a day, but the food that he got was very frugal or very less. He would get dry bread, boiled beans, boiled vegetables, and even if he had chicken, it was boiled. If he called for another helping, in a cracked voice that quavered theoretically, Rakesh himself would come to the door, gaze at him sadly and shake his head, saying, Now, Papa, we must be careful. We can't risk another illness, you know, and although the daughter-in-law kept tactfully out of the way, the old man could just see her smirk sliding merrily through the air. When the old man asked for a second share in his quavering voice or shivering voice, Rakesh himself would come to the door, look at his father sadly and shake his head and would tell him that we have to be very careful at your age. We cannot risk another illness. And his daughter-in-law would not say much, but Mr. Verma would often see her making, you know, a smirk, meaning a smile of hate, and this hurts him even more. He tried to bribe his grandchildren into buying him sweets, and how he missed his wife now, that generous, indulgent, and illiterate cook, whispering, Here's fifty pies, as he stuffed the coins into a tight, hot fist. Run down to the shop at the crossroads and buy me thirty pies worth of jalebis, and you can spend the remaining twenty pies on yourself, eh? Understand? Will you do that? 
he got away with it twice, once or twice, but then he found out the conspirator was scolded by his father and smacked by his mother, and Rakesh came storming into the room, almost tearing his hair as he shouted through compressed lips, Now, Papa, are you trying to turn my little son into a liar? Quite apart from spoiling your own stomach, you are spoiling him as well. You are encouraging him to lie to his own parents. Mr. Verma must have been very fond of sweets, because he would even bribe his grandchildren to go and buy him some jellabies. They often got away with it, but one day he called his grandson and gave him 50 pies. He said, go and buy me 30 pies worth of jellabies and you can spend the rest 20 pies for yourself. So on returning, the little boy got caught by his father and was scolded. Not only his son was scolded, but Mr. Verma was also scolded by his son. Okay, Rakesh came to his room and said, Papa, what are you doing? You are turning my son into a liar. Apart from that, you are not only spoiling him, but you are also spoiling your stomach as well. How can you do this? You are encouraging him to lie to his own parents. And then he further said, You should have heard the lies he told to his mother when she saw him bringing back those jellabies wrapped up in filthy newspaper. I don't allow anyone in my house to buy sweets in the bazaar, Papa. Surely you know that. Rakesh, being a doctor, he was very careful about what his family members eat. So he told his father he don't allow anyone in the house to buy sweets from the bazaar since they are wrapped with dirty newspapers. He said, I know what's going on, Daddy. In the hospital, people get cholera, typhoid, gastroenteritis by eating these things. So, hearing this, the old man sighed and laid down in a corpse position as though he was dead. But this did not bother anyone any longer, since they know he is not really dead.